Hey everybody. Today we're talking about the closed interval method for finding absolute maxima and minima. This is a reliable way of finding absolute extrema for any continuous function on any closed interval. That is, a domain of the form a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b. The whole conversation is motivated by this fact. Any continuous function on any closed interval has both an absolute maximum and absolute minimum value, as in this picture. Now, both of the conditions of this fact are really essential. Not every function has an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum. For instance, here's a function with a discontinuity. It's defined on the interval 1, 7, so that's a closed interval because the endpoints are included. But because of that discontinuity, it lacks an absolute maximum. We can make y as close as we like to 3, but not exactly 3. Similarly, here's a function that lacks extrema of any kind, but is only defined on an open interval. Again, we can make this function closer and closer to 2 as we make x closer and closer to 4, but we can never quite get there. So we could always make the y value just a little bit larger. Let's go back to this first example. We saw that the absolute maximum value of 1.5 was attained at the right-hand endpoint at about x equals 3.5. Um, similarly, the absolute minimum is about 0.35, and that's attained at about x equals 2.6, where the graph has a horizontal tangent. So one of those absolute extrema is occurring at an endpoint, and the other is occurring at a critical value. In fact, those are the only two sorts of places where absolute extrema can occur. And that fact gives us a direct way of finding absolute extrema for any continuous function on any closed interval. We call it the closed interval method, and it goes like this. Suppose we have a function y equals f of x defined on a closed interval a comma b. And suppose that function is continuous. First, we find all the critical values of the function that lie inside that interval. Then, we take the values x equals a and x equals b and add them to that list of critical values. Then we plug all those critical values into the function. The largest is going to be the absolute maximum, and the smallest is going to be the absolute minimum. The motivation here is pretty simple. In step, by the end of step two, we have a complete list of all the candidates for absolute max and min, for where the absolute max and min can occur. And then we're just manually checking that list to see which one gives us the biggest value and which one gives us the smallest. It's worth pointing out that while the absolute maximum value is unique and the absolute minimum value is unique, each one can happen at more than one x value. And we'll see an example like that in a little bit. Example one, find the absolute extrema of the function negative x cubed plus 6x squared minus 10 on the interval negative 3 comma 5. This is a closed interval. Those closed brackets, the square brackets around the negative 3 and 5, indicate that those points are included in the domain. And this function is continuous. It's a polynomial. All polynomials are continuous everywhere. So we want to find critical values on the interval negative 3, 5. Again, since f is a polynomial, the derivative is going to exist everywhere. So really, we're just looking for places where the derivative is 0. That's the only sort of critical value that we need to consider here. We differentiate. We get negative 3x squared plus 12x. Set it equal to 0. Factor the common factor of negative 3x out of the right side. Setting each of those factors equal to 0, we get the two critical values, x equals 0 and x equals 4. Notice both of these are contained inside the interval negative 3 comma 5. So, to this list of critical values, we add the endpoints, x equals negative 3 and x equals 5, to get a list of four potential locations for our absolute extrema. These are our candidates. Now we're just going to go back and plug each one of them into the function f of x equals negative x cubed plus 6x squared minus 10. f of negative 3 is 71, f of 0 is negative 10, f of 4 is 22, and f of 5 is 15. The largest value in that list is 71, so that's the absolute maximum value of this function on this interval. It occurs at x equals negative 3. The smallest value on the list is negative 10, so this function has an absolute minimum value of negative 10, 
which occurs at x equals 0. Example 2. Find the absolute extrema of f of x equals x to the fourth minus 8x squared minus 9 on the interval negative 1 comma 1. Again, we have a closed, in, uh, closed interval, negative 1 comma 1, and a continuous function. This function is another polynomial, so it's continuous everywhere. It's um, also going to be differentiable everywhere. The um, f prime is never going to not exist. So to find critical values, we just need to take a derivative and set it equal to 0. f prime is 4x cubed minus 16x. So we set that equal to 0, factor out the 4x out of the right, and we're left with 4x times x squared minus 4. That's a difference of squares. So we factor that as x minus 2 times x plus 2. Setting each of those factors equal to 0, x equals negative 2, 0, and 2. Those are the critical values of this function. However, notice that x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2 do not lie in the interval in question. We're only supposed to be looking from negative 1 to 1. So we have to ignore the critical values negative 2 and 2. x equals 0 is the only one we care about. We add the endpoints of the interval to that list, so we're considering three candidates for absolute extrema, negative 1, 0, and 1. Now we go back to our original function f of x and plug those three values in. f of negative 1 is negative 16, f of 0 is negative 9, and f of 1 is negative 16 again. So the largest value on that list is negative 9, so that's the absolute maximum value of this function on the interval negative 1 comma 1. It occurs at x equals 0. The absolute minimum value is negative 16, and that's assumed twice, at x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 1. Let's conclude by seeing a graph of this function. Here we see y equals x to the fourth minus 8x squared minus 9. Globally, this does not have an absolute maximum. It grows without bound as x gets bigger and bigger in either direction. However, we're only interested in the closed interval from negative 1 to 1. Here on this graph, we see the absolute maximum occurring at x equals 0, at that critical value where we have a horizontal tangent. At that, at that place, y is equal to negative 9. We also see the absolute minimum value of negative 16 attained at both of the endpoints, x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 1.